Hello and welcome to the Thursday live stream. If you've been waiting for a few minutes you might have spotted my deliberate mistake uh, in putting the wrong uh, title screen up so I changed that. <laughs> I hope you didn't notice. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the basic ventilator screen. So I'm going to use the Hamilton ventilator which is the one that we use at work and is the one that provides um, a virtual ventilator for me to use. So hopefully that's something you're going to find useful. Um, while you're here, if you've not met me before, my name is Jonathan Downham. I'm an advanced critical care practitioner here in the UK. Um, you might also want to look at some of my other resources. So we've got my website at criticalcarepractitioner.co.uk. Uh, there are lots of posts on there, one of which is on basic ventilator screens. The other resource I provide is the Critical Care Practitioner podcast and what I do is once I finish these teaching sessions is I take the sound files and load them up to the podcast as well and then I put that podcast onto the page on my website to go along with the post so hopefully it all syncs together. Um, you can find my teaching site over at criticalcarepractitioner.podia.com um, and just to let you know, um, I have a basic mechanical ventilation course, um, well, a bit more than basic, I call it Mastering Mechanical Ventilation, which normally sells for £57. It's uh, lots and lots of videos. Uh, from next Friday, it's going to drop to £27 for a week. So if you go to my page, you can have a look at that and see whether it's for you or not. It comes with a guarantee as well. Um, if you buy it and you find it's not for you, it's too simple, um, or it's just not applicable to you, then as long as you do it within 14 days, I will provide you with a refund. Absolutely no questions asked. You don't need to provide a reason. Just say, I want my money back and you will get your money back. So without further ado, let's crack on and talk about the ventilator. So this is the Hamilton ventilator screen, like I say. Now, there are a number of features that are fairly consistent with most ventilator systems. So firstly, you can see up here at the top is the mode that the ventilator is in. Now, a lot of ventilator companies have different names for the same mode, so it can become a little bit confusing. But for the purpose of this conversation we're going to be talking about volume controlled ventilation um, and um, uh, volume controlled ventilation sorry a message just popped up there that threw me volume controlled ventilation or pressure controlled ventilation so this mode is PSIMV so this is a pressure controlled mode of ventilation and we'll talk about volume controlled in a moment so let's start with the settings. So the settings are here down on this side. This is what you actually input as a user into the ventilator to get the ventilator to do what you want it to do. So if we start with the obvious one down at the bottom, that's the oxygen percentage that you are giving your patient. It can clearly go down to as low as 21% and it can go as high as 100%. Um, the more oxygen you give, probably the sicker your patient is and really we try and give the minimal amount of oxygen we can get away with because high concentrations of oxygen over a long period of time can be quite harmful to the lungs as well. So in an ideal world you're looking at saturations 94 to 98% on a somebody who hasn't got uh, something like COPD for example, not greater than 98%. Um, I often go around at work switching oxygen concentrations down as I see patients with saturations of 99-100%. That's an indicator that you can turn the oxygen down and see how they get on. 94 to 98 is perfectly acceptable. So that's the oxygen requirements. The next value up is the PEEP or CPAP. Well let's just talk about PEEP for now. So I did a video uh, two weeks ago about PEEP and PEEP is generally set for most patients as a minimum of five centimeters and this is to help keep those airways open. You can get a lot of collapse at the lung bases when patients are being ventilated for various reasons and what you do is you provide PEEP which keeps the pressure always at least five centimeters hoping to minimize that collapse 
and therefore improve the patient's oxygenation. And you can see that pressure reflected on the pressure wave here. So you can see that uh, this is the pressure down the side and this is time along the bottom. And you can see the line here never drops to zero. It always stays at five centimeters and then the pressure goes up as the, as the breath goes in and then comes down as the breath goes out. Um, so that is PEEP. Can go up to eight, can go up to 10, can go up to 15. There's different theories out there about how much PEEP one should be giving a patient, but that's, that's for another discussion. Then here we've got the P inspired, or it's often referred to as the pressure control. So remember I said that this patient was having pressure controlled ventilation. So what we are saying to this machine, to this ventilator is, you will apply 15 centimeters of pressure on top of their PEEP um, to their lungs. Once you've done that, then you will breathe out or you will the patient will be allowed to expire. So we're gonna give them 15 centimeters of pressure. Now that means that the patient will get a variable tidal volume, depending on how compliant their lungs are. So if they've got really stiff lungs through things like fibrosis, it might be that you need to give them more pressure than that to get the tidal volumes to a value that you actually want. And tidal volumes, we're looking at six to eight mils per kilo. And I'll talk about the tidal volumes on this patient in a moment. So you can see this is 15 centimeters above five, which gives us an overall, and this is the peak pressure over here, an overall peak pressure of 20 centimeters. 15 plus five equals 20. Then you've got the, the, the rate. Now this is the rate that the ventilator is set at. So the ventilator is going to give this patient 12 breaths, regardless of what the patient does. And in PSIMV, they can do something should they want to, or should they be able to. But this particular patient I've assumed is, let's say paralyzed or very, very heavily sedated and not taking any breaths for themselves. So this ventilator will give the patient 12 breaths. So they're gonna give them one breath every five seconds and obviously this can be changed so if I was to click on that and decided I wanted to give the patient a bit more you just increase it let's say I want to give them 18 breaths click on that again and now you'll see that those breaths become a little bit more frequent you do have to be careful with things like the IE ratio the inspiration to uh, expiration ratio some ventilators compensate for it automatically the Hamilton doesn't you have to go and adjust the time inspired but again that's for another lecture I think let's stick to the basics for this one okay so those are the settings those are the main settings now in here if you go into controls there are some other settings that you can change. I'm not going to talk about that for this lecture. I think maybe we come back to those in the future. I am gonna ask one of my colleagues in the future to talk to us about flow trigger, because I think he'll be able to give you a better understanding on it than I can, but that's one for the future. So now we've got this side of the uh, ventilator screen. And really this is telling us what the patient is actually doing, what we are achieving by giving the patient the settings that we've decided on the other side of the screen. So we've already talked about the peak pressure. So that's the pressure control plus the PEEP. This is the minute volume. The minute volume is very simple. It's the respiratory rate times the tidal volume. So if I could do the maths, this would be 726 multiplied by 18 would give us a tidal volume of 13.1 litres per minute. Now in, a, in and of itself that's not a very useful number but what it can do is if you track it over time as your patient's lungs become stiffer or more compliant that minute volume can potentially change as well. So over time it can give you some idea as to how well the patient is doing. The tidal volume is here and tidal volume is how many mils of air stroke air oxygen mix we are giving the patient so with this patient we are giving them 15 centimeters of pressure control as I said over here plus their peep so 20 overall and that is giving them a tidal volume of 726 mils per breath this can vary slightly per breath it's not normally as consistently rigid as this um, but this particular patient is breathing 
is being given 726 mils per breath. Now 726 mils for most patients is far too much. Remember I said four, uh, six to eight mils per kilo um, is what we should be giving them. We used to give them kind of 10 mils per kilo and often patients would be having uh, ventilated breaths of a litre or more, but that was many years ago. Since then, we've come to realise that actually such big breaths, all they do is cause barotrauma um, and start to tear those alveoli. So this patient, his breaths are probably too big. So let's say, let's assume, for example, we wanted 450 mils per breath. Well, what we would then have to do is we would go to our pressure control or our pressure inspired um, and we would turn that down. So if we turn that down to say 10, click on that, then hopefully you should see the tidal volume start to drop because now we're not putting so much pressure into those patients' lungs anymore and therefore they're not being filled so much. So you can see that our tidal volumes have dropped as a consequence. Now, if this was volume controlled ventilation, instead of the P inspired here, we would have volume. So we would set the volume at, say, 500 mils. Um, and then what would change would be the airway pressures because the ventilator is just going to deliver 500 mils. Um, and um, it will do that regardless of the pressure. So it could be that that sends the pressures up to 30 centimeters, for example, which would be a little bit on the high side. It could be that the patient's got very compliant lungs and the pressures are absolutely fine for us to deliver 500 mils. But when you're talking about volume controlled ventilation, your volume is the um, variable that's not gonna change, but your pressure is the one that is going to change. So that's the basic ventilator screen. So when you're coming to set up your patient, you're gonna be setting the rate, you're gonna be setting their pressure control or their volume, depending which mode you're using. You're gonna be setting their PEEP and you're gonna be setting how much oxygen they're on. So if you just get the joy of me back again, there you go. So I hope that's useful. Um, if it's a bit too basic for some of you, then like I say, the mechanical ventilation course that I'm going to be selling at a discount a week on Friday uh, might be helpful. Uh, you could also think about joining the Critical Care Skills with the Critical Care Practitioner Facebook group. If you follow me on Facebook anyway as the Critical Care Practitioner, you'll see a join here pointing down to my groin for some reason. Um, and if you want to join us there, because eventually these teaching sessions are going to be moving over to there. I want to get a discussion going amongst other healthcare providers, and I want to know what it is that you want to be taught. And if I can teach it to you, I very gladly will. Anyway, I hope that's useful. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next week. I think it's going to be Thursday again next week, but we'll just have to see. I'll let you know.